oppression and violence directed by Byzantium against the Egyptian Monophysites and the Jacobian Christians, the horrors endured by those Jews and Orthodox Christians who found themselves in the path of the Catholic Crusaders, and the persecution endured by the Jews of Europe, as well as by the Muslims and Jews in Spain, after the Reconquista, have never occurred on Muslim soil. Driven out of Spain and faced with more hardship in other countries where they sought refuge, many died of hunger and thirst at the gates of towns and cities they were not permitted to enter. Jews who boarded Genoese ships were either exploited or sold to pirates. Jews escaping Spanish tyranny found the peace and security they sought on Ottoman soil. Sultan Bayezid who opened the gates of the empire to the Jews and allowed them to travel and free them by sending ships for them, issued a royal command to all provinces, stressing that Jews expelled unjustly from their homelands should be treated with care and affection. The royal command said, Rather than turning back the Jews of Spain, they must be welcomed with all sincerity. Anyone behaving differently, mistreating the migrants, or causing any harm to befall them, will be punished by death. Sultan Bayezid is known to history as a religious man, and his hospitality and affection were based on the Qur'an's morality. One of the lands where people attained peace under Islamic rule is Palestine. Jewish and Christian communities living in Palestine enjoyed freedom of belief in the days of Islamic rule. They lived in peace and security under Muslim administration and engaged freely in art and commerce. The Ottoman Empire established peace and security in the region for 500 years and it has proved impossible to rebuild that order brought about by the Ottomans. The freedoms and justice enjoyed in Jerusalem and its surrounding area under Ottoman rule is described by one of Israel's ex-foreign ministers, Abba Ibn, as follows. Jerusalem and the Jewish nation suffered bloodshed and torture from the Romans and every other occupying force. Only after the conquest of Jerusalem by Sultan Yavuz Selim and its fortification by Suleiman the Magnificent did the Jewish nation discover what humanity, equality and a peaceful life meant. Throughout the Muslim world, Muslims, Jews and Christians lived together in peace and tranquility for centuries. The people of the book engaged in commerce and acquired property as they wished, engaged in the trade or profession of their choice, and were appointed to posts in the state administration, and even the Sultan's palace. They enjoyed the freedom of thought and expression at the highest degree and made scientific and cultural achievements that are still with us today. They were not denied their social rights and enjoyed maximum freedoms of belief and worship. This unequaled compassion and justice in Muslim lands was based on the Qur'an's morality. Muslim leaders who adopted such ethical standards always achieved security, peace and justice in their domains. These administrations' priority was the public's happiness and prosperity. Therefore they established systems that they set the standards for future generations. When these same values of compassion, mercy, justice, understanding, modesty, patience, selflessness and devotion derived from the Qur'an's morality begin to pervade today's society, it will be possible to create a world order in which all people will find peace and security.